Private clinics, regulators and the government have come under attack for failing to warn women about the dangers of faulty breast implants. Women with the PIP implants have been told they can have them removed on the NHS but not replaced. But the Health Committee of MPs said today that a warning should have been given much sooner. We're joined by the lawyer Kevin Timms who's with Garden House Solicitors and represents PIP victims and Lucy Pullen who's had two operations involving PIP implants. So, Kevin Timms, to you first. Concern about this delay almost two years between surgeons being notified that there might be a problem and it becoming public knowledge? Well, it, it was, it's essentially public knowledge when the MHRA first released their first medical device alert in March 2010. The problem is we had 47,000 women or 40,000 women at the time known to have these implants, whereas France only had 30,000 women. The MHRA just waited to see what the French results were going to be. They tested for to toxicity and whether the implants could cause cancers, which they don't. But they should have gone further to test what the mechanical and physical properties of the implants were and what other health risks associated with the implants, which they haven't done until now. Uh, and so that, it, that delay um, in that information coming through, and we know that there was criticism of, of the government's response here as, a, as opposed to uh, the French government's response, but that delay has led to a lot of uh, disquiet, a lot of anxiety for women who have these implants, hasn't it? And, and confusion as well. Um, the issue is we don't know how many women would have potentially had an additional rupture um, or adverse symptoms or inflamed lymph loads um, between 2010 and December 2011, so this delay. Many more women could have sought help, MRI scans and got the, the care that they needed um, during this interim period but this delay has obviously caused so much more hassle for these women anxiety mental anguish on top of all the additional injuries. Lisa you've um, had uh, PIP implants do you know what you're, you're going to do about them? Um, it's quite a scary time to be honest because you see so many different things in the papers you don't know what to believe I don't know what's sort of going on with everything. Um, is, your, is your GP giving you advice? No I had to contact the clinic myself no one contacted me told me I had these implants I had to ring them I've actually further rung them a number of times to follow it up I get no response they don't call me back so it's a really really scary time and I don't know whether to get them removed or not at the moment I mean one of the things that the, the committee has focused on today is this sort of anomaly that the NHS will take out implants but they won't replace them and they won't let you pay to have them replaced at the same time so you have to have two operations uh, it, it, do you think the intervention by after all Stephen Dorrell the chairman of the committee former health secretary is likely to change that well, the, they've recommended that the Department of Health go away and try and put together a framework to see if it's possible for the NHS to take an additional payment from patients to replace the implants. But the format the NHS is in at the moment, um, private sur surgery and NHS surgery has to be kept completely separate off the same premises and at the set different times as well. So it's very difficult for the NHS to actually take any, any payments for replacement implants. But the, as I understand it from the recommendations of the, the Health Committee, um, the Department of Health will be looking into this and we hope that they will do. Uh, Lucy, Pullen, from your point of view, you've got to make a decision. Mm. Do you go ahead and have them removed? And if you do have them removed, what are you left? What are your options left open to you? I mean, obviously, it's something that's going to be quite expensive from my side of things because I wouldn't probably want them just to be removed because you've got a lot of excess skin and it can, you know, it's it's that's why I had the implants in the first place because I wasn't happy with what I had before. So. Um, it's just a case of going to see new surgeons and getting their expertise on the situation. But at the moment, um, it's, I'm still sort of so torn and it's upsetting that I'm going to, I've had two operations now. The first time, um, the Harley Medical Group, they actually put in the wrong size implants and then I had to go back a year later and get them removed again. So another operation, it's dangerous to put my body through that for a third time within the space of four years. And so potentially you could, you could have to have two, a removal yeah. operation on the NHS and then a, an insertion on uh, exactly. uh, pay for yourself. Exactly. So it's and Lucy's not alone here by any stretch of the imagination, Kevin, is she? No, of course, no. I mean, um, as everyone knows, there's 40, 47,000 women that have these implants at the moment. At least 2,000 women have come forward and instructed solicitors already to try and make claims against their clinics for the reimbursement of um, the revision surgery they're going to have to undertake or they've already undertaken and also uh, personal injury compensation as well. And in Wales, you can have your breast implants replaced as well uh, on the health service. Um, 
why that difference? I mean, there is some concern by people in Wales, actually, that they shouldn't be paying for this. Yeah. Uh, I think the issue is it's a matter for the Welsh Assembly as opposed to the NHS in, in England. Um, I mean, the Welsh Assembly have taken the same view as France that it's better to remove the implants routinely or on the NHS if, if patients so wish uh, as, a, as a preventative measure as opposed to precautionary measure. Um, I noticed that the Health Committee's report today um, stated that France has done it for a precautionary measure, whereas actually AFSEPS has clearly stated it's for, to prevent further problems in the future. And I think that's the right advice that people should be getting at the moment. Um, there are problems with the implants. We don't know what particular individual's implants is going to rupture at what stage. Mm. Um, it's just too unpredictable, and that's just not something people need to have the anxiety to deal with. I mean, I don't know if she's your client or not, but what would your advice be to someone like Lucy in this circumstance? The first port of call is always to seek advice from your GP or implanting surgeon. The medical advice comes first beyond everything else. Obviously, if there is concerns about any revision surgery um, or, or compensation for personal injuries, then obviously speak to a solicitor such as garden house solicitors that are already heavily involved with these cases. Um, but the first thing is get medical advice and make sure that you're properly looked after in terms of your care. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, coming up, London's legacy. We'll be speaking to Olympic champion and ambassador for the Games, Denise Lewis. That's after the break. Don't go away.